dun 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 deck tech the video where we talk about my commander my deck and the cards i enjoy drawing hey it's leah and this is my commander multani and he's fairly simple for an older commander he has two abilities his power and toughness is equal to the size of everybody's hand combined and his um second ability is basically shroud that's it for him the purpose behind this deck was to see if i could make a deck that did more blue things and less green things but do it in mono green this was about two years ago before green was just all colors of the color pie anyways but in i took it as do not go big on a Voltron Commander, but don't go wide either. So we'll uh, hop into the deck and take a look at what I did for this Commander with Shroud. Okay, so Multani's deck is a fairly simple concept. We're just going to draw as many cards as we can, hopefully our entire deck, and keep it in our hand. So we have a lot of cards that will give us an unlimited hand size and a lot of cards that will let us draw more cards. Since the thing green is really good at doing is actually ramping and finding land, a lot of the cards that we're using in the deck allow us just to find extra lands, but I used a lot of the less rampy versions of these that put the land in our hand instead of on the battlefield. Having about eight land on the battlefield works out just fine for this deck. That's all it really cares about. So filling our hand up with land is not really a problem. This deck is actually pretty creature light as well. There's only 11 creatures in this deck. It's mostly just spells. And the third part of our deck concept is that we have to get Multani through by some means. This is usually by giving Trample, but Multani has um, Shroud, so Trample has to be given in a non-targeting way. There's a couple versions of doing this. Like, Waxing Moon lets us give all the creatures we control Trample, Brawn, which isn't too difficult for us to get into the graveyard, and we have a forest because we're mono green, so all of our creatures have Trample. Let's see where else. Uh, Primal Rage gives all of our creatures Trample. And then keeping these um, versions of trample from different sources like uh, primal rage here is an enchantment and waxing moon is an instant and brawn is a creature we actually can make a lot of use of holistic wisdom in this deck with the variety of types of cards so holistic wisdom pay to remove a card from your hand in your hand from the game so you exile it but then you can return a card with a matching card type so since I should have most of my deck in my hand, getting towards the end of the game, I can get back any of these key trample pieces, and hopefully Multani is somewhere between 50 and 80 power, depending on how many cards I still have in my hand and how many opponents I have left. I can usually assume that my opponents are not on the same game plan as put their whole deck in their hand, so I usually just count on my own hand. Uh, another important card in this deck is Cordant Crossroads to give uh, Multani a version of Haste that generally speeds the deck up by one turn because he comes out pretty big and I can swing right away. I'm going to make a quick note on Cordant Crossroads here. I'll hop over to Gatherer for this note. Uh, Cordant Crossroads is a super type world. This was something I learned very recently was... When a world permanent enters the battlefield, all the other world permanents are moved to their owner's graveyard. So you can only have one world permanent on the battlefield. doesn't matter who controls it. If they enter at the same time, they both die at the same time. So I thought that was kind of interesting. I'd never paid a lot of attention to this world before. I'm going to have to start. I don't think I even have any other world permanents in this deck you don't 
see a whole lot of those. I've only seen them on older cards. Maybe they're all on the reserve list. I don't know. So let's see. A couple other important pieces in this deck. Let's see, we've got a fog because I have very few creatures. So decks that have a go wide strategy. I need to stay alive long enough to not die to those. Um, life gain is a uh, big deal in this deck for the same reasons as fog. I'm My life gets pretty low before my uh, game plan is online. So momentous fall can gain me life. We go way down here to our artifacts. Should have a Vencer's Journal. Both works for the maximum hand size and the life gain plan. Spellbook works for our maximum hand size. Library of Lang helps with our maximum hand size. Uh, Reliquary Tower is in this deck as well. We have a lot of maximum hand size. There's not a ton of life gain in the deck. Wish there was a little more. A lot of our sorceries are going to just draw us either land or creatures. Like Tooth and Nail is here just so that I can... I don't pay the entwine cost. I really just want to pull more stuff into my hand. Seek the Horizons pulls it into my hand. Regrowth can pull it into my hand if it's really important. See, Nissa's Pilgrimage was one of my more favorite finds for this deck of a way to pull a bunch of lands into my hand. Here's an this one draws a lot. Usually if it's pretty early in the game, if I can get Multani out early, I can sack Multani to cards like this to draw a lot of cards and then just replay Multani for two more, but much, much bigger. Let's see. Uh, alternate plans, if I just cannot get through on the Multani plan, Worm Calling continue to make worms. They're just one bigger every turn as I slowly feed the forests out of my hand onto the battlefield. This, these backup plans are usually occur once enough board wipes have happened and Multani is just unfeasibly castable at that point. Uh, Primal Order is an interesting backup plan as well because it does damage on each upkeep for to each player for non-basics they control. I really have very few non-basics in this deck. So I'm hoping this will just kill my opponents faster than it would kill me. And then finally, since I'm going to draw a lot of cards, I just have to slow that down a little. Or late in the game, there's uh, words, words of the Wild. I'm fine, it's an enchantment. Words of Wilding. So when my library has become empty, I just have to start funneling my mana into uh, making bears instead. But as I'm drawing my cards, hopefully maybe I can be making cats and pump all those up if I absolutely am out of other plans. Let's see if there's anything else of major note in here. Compost is a card that's been in and out of the deck a couple of times. It's, I can't quite make up my mind in it, but dead cards in this deck are not a big deal because I can just keep them in my hand and they increase the size of my commander. So a dead card in the hand is the same as a plus one plus one counter to me. Abundance is a pretty helpful card because I do run a a high land count in this deck because that's what I'm fetching out the most so I want to keep having them available to find so if I'm drawing cards choosing to find a non-land card can also be very useful. So we're pretty creature light. The creature slots had to do a lot for the deck. So Yavamaya Elder 
ramps to my hand or lets me draw a card. This one specifically, I liked the um, the art for him. People don't recognize this one because it's the older art. Silk Lash Spider to help control some flyers. The Sage of Ancient Lore is kind of like a backup version of Multani. Realm Seekers is also fairly close to a backup version of Multani. Nylea to Grant Trample to Multani. This Cultivator, if I filled my hand up with a lot of lands and Multani is not quite online, then I can discard a lot of them, pick up that many more cards, and make this into another large creature. See, Lifeblood Hydra to gain a little bit of life. This Heartwood Storyteller is to help boost Multani by making my opponents hopefully draw more cards than they can use or not be able to play out their hands. Not the safest plan in the world, but this creature has been kind of an interesting creature, kind of a little bit of a filter, especially helpful if I'm kind of digging for a land. Since I have a high land count, usually this counts as a draw. Eternal Witness is fairly obvious, as is Brawn. Go back down here, I'm not sure there's any other particular artifacts of interest. Thought Vessel for unlimited hand size. The Great Henge is just a powerhouse no matter where you put it. Temple Bell is kind of like give Multani plus two or plus three, depending on how many players are left in the game. So you can use this right before uh, combat or during combat. Nevenel's Disc, because I really have very few ways to wipe the board in this deck. So if I absolutely have to do it, then it's Nevenel's Disc. That's a about it for what's going on in the Meltani deck, and we'll hop on over and look at some of my favorite pet cards. And not a lot of um, specific cards in this deck that were put here just because I like them. This is one of my more powerful decks, so it actually has some sort of focus as opposed to cards I like. But this Yavamaya Elder here, I enjoy him just because he has unusual artwork compared to the more common versions of him found. So when people see him on the table, they never quite recognize which one this is. Library of Lang was one of the first EDH cards I got specifically thinking about EDH. This was uh, many, many years ago at 10 cents a card, but at the time I ordered them, I had to meet a minimum requirement, so I ordered about 12 or 13 of these things and gave them away to all my friends so that we could all have unlimited hand size. We all thought this was great seven years ago. Still enjoying it today, though. Have this uh, forest. This is actually, I don't know how well this shows up, it's nice foily. Forest. I remember I was just playing this in a game and my friend goes, do you have any idea how much that is? And I'm like, no. So he goes, you really ought to sleep that. So I did. And it's still in nice shape today. And the last uh, card that I'd like to highlight in this deck, this is actually Reliquary Tower. I found this for in a card shop I visited on a trip to Spain. It was 10 euros and I just had never seen this kind of this art for it and I decided I really needed to take it home as a souvenir so when I play my decks I can enjoy some of my souvenirs from Spain. <laughs> 